What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Daily Psalm, where every day we're going through one of the psalms. Here we are on day 90 for the third time. Hallelujah. Psalm 90. And I say the third time because this is uh, the third time uh, in the last little more than a year that we've been through the psalms doing a daily psalm. And uh, praise God, all glory to him. I couldn't do it without him, and I wouldn't do it without him. And Psalm 90 is the beginning of, as we see here, book four. The Psalms were written on scrolls, and I guess this was the, the fourth scroll, the beginning of the, the fourth scroll of the Psalms. And Psalm 90, we see, is a prayer of Moses, the man of God. And this is the only Psalm of Moses in the whole Bible. And <clears throat> Psalm 90 gives us God's timeline of when the end is going to come. Now, I, I can't say exactly when it's going to happen, but I believe God gives us his timeline, for, not only for uh, his timeline, for his, second, for his second coming. And we're going to see that here in a little bit. So before I get started, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. And anyone who hasn't received the free gift of salvation and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul. This first death is just the body. Our soul doesn't die. But after judgment, we're either given eternal life or permanent death, death of body and soul in a lake of fire. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn our salvation. There's nothing we can do to earn eternal life. It's only through the sacrifice of Jesus. God requires... God God is uh, po holy, perfect, and righteous. And He's not going to allow any type of unrighteousness or sin in His kingdom. We have to be made perfect. And the only possible way to be made perfect is through the sacrifice of Jesus. Because we can't earn it. None of us are perfect. That's why Jesus came 2,000 years ago. Born as a human, Jesus is God, not the Father, but the Son. There's the Father and there's the Son. The Son came and was born as a human. Lived a perfect life. Faced temptations like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect and didn't deserve any punishment, he didn't deserve to die, that death that he died on the cross was for us. The death that we deserve in a lake of fire for our sins, he took upon himself on the cross. So that through him, our lake of fire death is taken away and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sins are taken away and we receive his perfection, his righteousness. It's only through faith and what he did for us on the cross that we can be saved. It's not through works. Although we do have to be obedient to God if we live certain lifestyles, before or after coming to faith, we won't be in the kingdom. And we'll be in a lake of fire. So, repent and believe the gospel. The word repent means to have a change of heart or change of mind. To truly give your life to God. To truly turn to God, turn to Jesus. Uh, most of the time we see repent in the Bible, it means to uh, turn from your sins and turn to God. Follow Him. Do what's right. Repent and believe the gospel. If you truly believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And you call out to him to forgive you. To save you. And you mean it. He will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit which changes your heart and leads you to follow him. The Holy Spirit also gives you wisdom, discernment, and understanding in the Bible and in many things. He will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit. And he will give you eternal life. The Bible says we can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. And we love him by following him, by obeying him, by trusting in him. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus Christ today. There's not much time left. There's truly not much time left. We're going to see here in a minute. We may have, uh, we may have another year. We, we, may, we may not. We'll see. But let's get into Psalm 90. Lord... And as again, it was a prayer of Moses, the man of God, or a man of God, the man of God, I'm sorry. Lord, 
You have been our dwelling place. And I'm just pulling up the footnote for dwelling place. It says hiding place. And some ancient translation is the Masoretic, Masoretic text. I believe that's what the MSS stands for. Read place of refuge. Lord, you are, you are our dwelling place or place of refuge. In all generations, hallelujah. We trust in him and he saves us. Before the mountains were born, or you gave birth to the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, we're talking about the creator, the one who made all things. No one else is even close. Everything else is just creation and what they created afterwards. You turn man back into dust and say, return, O children of men. Return from the dust. Well, actually, he says, See, we came from dust. The Bible says we came from dust and to dust we will return. And so I do believe this is what I was speaking about. What it what it is speaking about. I I was thinking originally uh speaking about uh resurrecting. You turn man back into dust and say, Return, O children of men. We all came from dust, we all will return. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it passes by, or as a watch in the night. And we read this in a few other scriptures I'm going to go to here in a second, but a thousand years to God is one day. And this is part of how we get God's timeline for mankind. God has a set timeline for mankind, and he's going to... We're coming to the end of that timeline right now. Right now. Whether it's this year, next year, the next couple years, it's very soon. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it passes by. Or as a watch in the night. So, if we go over here to Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 3, starting in verse 7. But by his word, the present have, and actually, let me get, let me just go to the beginning of the chapter. I'll start from the beginning of the chapter. And uh, so, Second Peter verse, Second Peter chapter three. This is, this is now, beloved, the second letter I am writing to you. And literally, right when I pulled up Second Peter chapter three, my little brother pulled into the park, into the uh, driveway here. And maybe I'll show him this video later. I don't think it's a. Uh, I mean, nothing's a coincidence. Nothing's a coincidence with God. Second Peter three. This now, this is now, beloved, the second letter I am writing to you. In which I am stirring you up to, I mean, in which I am stirring you, stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder, that you should remember the words spoken beforehand by the holy prophets and the commandment of the Lord and Savior spoken by your apostles. Know this first of all, that in the last days mockers will come with their mocking, following after their own lusts and saying, and I see this, I see this coming from a lot of believers. A lot of believers are these mockers and scoffers. I see I see this a lot. And people don't even realize they're fulfilling prophecy when they say this. They say, all oh, people have been saying Jesus is going to come forever. They've been, they were, they've been saying that. They were saying that 50 years ago. I mean, they're literally fulfilling the mockers and scoffers. And a lot of them are believers. Know that, knowing this, first of all, that in the last days, mockers will come with their mocking. 
following after their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all continues just, just as it was from the beginning of creation. For when they maintain this, and just like I just said, all, all continues just as it was from the beginning. For when they maintain this, it escapes their notice that by the word of God, Jesus is the word of God, that by the word of God, the heavens existed long ago and the earth was formed out of water and by water. And this is what we have described in Genesis. With the waters above, above the firmament, and below the firmament. firmament. But by his word, the present heavens and earth are being reserved for fire, kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. But do not let this one fact escape your notice. And let me repeat that last part real quick. But by his word, the present heavens and earth are being reserved for fire, kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. Do not let, let this one fact escape your notice, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. And, uh, all right. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, in which the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat. The earth and its works will be burned up. Since all these things are to be destroyed this way, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God? because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. But according to his promise, we are looking for a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you, are, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found in, by him in peace, spotless, and blameless. We read here, in Revelation chapter 20. See, a day to the Lord is a thousand years. And God's timeline is based on the creation week. The Sabbath. Well, the Sabbath is... Uh, we're going to go into Hebrews chapter 4 here in a second. And we're going to see that the rest of God. The rest that it speaks about for the people of God. Is actually the millennial reign of Christ. The seventh day. So God has a 6,000 year... See, God created the world in six days and rested on the seventh. And this is why there, there's a six days and rest on the seventh. That's why there's a Sabbath day. And the thousand year reign of Christ, which we're about to read about, is the seventh day. Meaning there's 6,000 years of man, the tribulation time, and then the thousand year reign of Christ. And then the great white throne judgment. When everyone is judged, every soul is judged, and then after that is eternity. And uh, we are literally right at the end of the 6,000 years right now, about to go right into the tribulation time, and then the thousand year reign of Christ. So we read here <clears throat> in Revelation chapter 20 Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding the key of the abyss, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who was the devil, and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he threw him into the abyss, and shut it, and sealed it over him, so that he would not deceive the nations any longer, until the thousand years were completed. After these things, he must be released for a short time. So he's going to be released after the... See, he's bound for this thousand year millennial reign of Christ the seventh day and then at the end he's going to be released for a short time I believe to to test and tempt people on on the earth who uh, who maybe don't know Jesus or who have never faced temptation because he's going to be him and his demons are going to be uh, well he's going to be bound 
Then I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony of Jesus and because of the word of God, and those who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received the mark on their forehead and on their hand. And they came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. That's the thousand year millennial reign of Jesus Christ, the seventh day. Now let's go into Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews 4 speaks about the seventh day. This uh, Sabbath rest of God, the millennial reign of Christ. A day to the Lord is, is a thousand years. Hebrews 4. Therefore, let us, or let us fear if, while a promise remains of entering his rest, any one of you may seem to have come short of it. For indeed, we have had the good news preached to us just as they also. And this is speaking about Israel. The Israelites had the gospel preached to them too. Not uh, specifically of Jesus, but the good news was that if you follow me, you will inherit the land. You will be brought into the promised land. And the promised land ultimately is his kingdom. And his kingdom is going to be here set up. In the, in the millennial reign of Christ. Jesus is going to reign here from Jerusalem uh, during the millennial reign as king. And um, and there's a promise to... So the Israelites had that promise to enter the promised land if they obeyed, but they didn't obey. And so we're going to see... Let me just continue reading. Therefore, let us fear if, while a promise remains of entering his rest, any one of you may seem to come short of it. For indeed, we have had the good news preached to us, just as they also. But the word they heard did not profit them, because it was not united by faith in those who heard. For we who have believed enter that rest, just as he has said. I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest. And this is a quote about the Israelites. God said, I, I swore on my wrath, they, they will not enter my rest. They will not enter my promised land. Although his works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has said somewhere, here we go. For he has said somewhere concerning the seventh day. For he has said somewhere concerning the seventh day. And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this passage, they shall not enter my rest. He's putting the, the writer of Hebrews is putting these two passages together, saying that rest is this, uh, is the promised land, is this thousand year reign of Christ, the seventh day. This rest is the seventh day, Sabbath rest of God. A day to the Lord is a thousand years. That last thousand years is the Sabbath rest of God. What the Israelites were promised if they would obey God. To enter that thousand year millennial reign. To enter his kingdom. For he has said somewhere concerning the seventh day. And God rested on the seventh day. According to his work. From all his works. And again in this passage. They shall not enter my rest. Therefore since it remains for some to enter it. And those who formerly had the good news preached to them failed to enter because of disobedience. He again fixes a certain day to date, certain day, today saying, Through David, after so long a time, just as it has been said before, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, Joshua is who actually took Israel into the promised land back then. They did enter the promised land back then. But God wasn't speaking about when God was said, you will inherit the land that's flowing with milk and honey. Speaking, uh, speaking about the promised land. Um, it's not what Joshua took them to. And Joshua, <laughs> see the Bible is so amazing because Joshua, that's the name of Jesus, Yeshua. 
And they have the same name, Joshua and Yeshua, Jesus. And Joshua is who took them into the promised land back then. And Jesus is who takes us into the promised land, the true promised land. And there are so many types and shadows in the Bible. It's amazing. For if, for if Joshua had given them rest, so he's saying that, that that promised land there wasn't the promised land. That wasn't the rest. For if Joshua had given them rest, he wouldn't have spoken of another day after that. Another Sabbath day after that, but a day to the Lord is a thousand years. For if Joshua had given them rest, he would not have spoken of another day after that. So there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For the one who has entered his rest has himself also rested from his works as God did from his. Therefore, let us be diligent to enter that rest, to enter his thousand-year reign, to enter his kingdom, so that no one will fall through following the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. There is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him whom we have to do. Hallelujah. Um, so let's get back to Psalm 90. But this is the... This is God's timeline. He has a 7,000 year timeline for mankind. That seventh day, that Sabbath rest, is his kingdom, the millennial reign of Christ that we read about in the book of Revelation. And if we go back in the genealogies all the way back to Adam, we are right at the end of the thousand years right now. Jesus came after 4,000 years. That was 2,000 years ago. For a thousand year for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it passes by, or as a watch in the night. In Psalm ninety here. You have swept them away like a flood. They fall asleep. So the sleep that represents death. You have swept them away like a flood. They fall asleep. In the morning they are like grass which, which sprouts anew. God likens us to grass. We are the, the plants of the grass. You have swept them away like a flood. They fall asleep. Speaking about the people die. In the morning. In the morning they are like grass which sprouts anew. In the morning it flourishes and sprouts anew. Toward the evening it fades and withers away. So, so we have the morning and evening here. So this is speaking about one day. I'm speaking about one day. You have swept them away like a flood. In the morning, they are like grass, grass which sprouts anew. In the morning it flourishes and sprouts anew. Toward the evening it withers and fades away. And no human has lived uh, up to a thousand years. Uh, back, we go back to the genealogies. Uh, there was a couple that lived 900. Uh, back in the very beginning. But no one lived a thousand years. And uh, also... Uh, let me just continue. For we have been consumed by your anger, and by your wrath we have been dismayed. You have placed our iniquities before you, our secret sins, in the light of your presence. For all our days have declined in your fury. We have finished our years with a sigh. As for the days of our life, so, so the days it is speaking of, Saying our days have declined in your fury, in your fury, the wrath of God, the wrath of God happens during the tribulation time. For we have been consumed by your anger, by His wrath, and by your wrath we have been dismayed. 
You have been pla you have placed our iniquities before you, our secret sins, in the light of your presence. For all our days have declined in your fury. Speaking about the wrath of God, the, in the days that it's speaking of is this 70 to 80 years that we're going to read in the next verse. For all our days have declined in your fury. We have finished our years like a sigh. As for the days of our life, they contain 70 years. And if due to strength, 80 years. Yet their pride is but labor and sorrow. For soon it is gone and we fly away. And I do believe... I do believe this is a... The Bible defining a generation for us. I believe this is speaking about this final generation. Which... When could this final generation have begun? We are at the end of the 6,000 years now. When could this final generation have begun? Except... When Israel was recreated as a nation in 1948... And I, I speak about this generation because we read here in Matthew 24. This is when Jesus was speaking about the end, the signs of his coming. I'm going to just read it from verse 29. It says, But immediately after the tribulation of those days, and that the tribulation of those days is speaking about, uh, from my understanding, is speaking about a 10-day period at the beginning of the tribulation time. When the first five seals open, a strong persecution of believers happens. And then at the end of that 10 days, from my understanding, that's when the, that's when Jesus comes on the clouds. That's when the earthquake happens. That's when America and Israel are attacked and it all goes down. But uh, it's going to be going down before that as well. It's going to be serious. But immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And the, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. Then all the, of the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. And he will send forth his angels with a great trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds and from one, from one end of the sky to the other. Now learn the parable from the fig tree. And if we study into the fig tree, we realize fig, the fig tree is speaking about not only Israel, but more specifically Judah. Israel is split up into two parts in the days after Solomon. Judah is the southern two tribes, and that's who the Jews are. The Israelites in the land today is mostly Judah. It's the fig tree. Now learn the parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So you too, when you see all these things, recognize that he is near, right at the door, at the same time when summer is near. Summer is near. Summer is near in May. May, June. Today is the first day of May. So... Now learn the parable from the fig tree when his branch has already become tender and puts forth its leaves, then you know that summer is near. So you too, when you see all these things, recognize that he is near, right at the door, that Jesus is near, right at the door, ready to come. Truly I say to you that this generation, the fig tree generation, the generation that sees the fig tree sprouting, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Until all these things take place, meaning the tribulation time and everything that happens during the tribulation time. Now this comes down to how long. Now how long is the tribulation time? I, be, I believe seven years, but the Bible also says the time will be cut short. And there's there's reasons to believe it could be three and a half as well. Um. So let's get back to let's go over back back over here to Psalm ninety. 
as for the days of our life they contain seventy years, or if due to strength, eighty years. Yet their pride is but labor and sorrow, for soon it is gone and we fly away. And let me just pull this up. Oh, it's already pulled up, but let me look at this in another translation. Or if eighty, if their strength endures, yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow. The NLT says pain and trouble. ESV, toil and trouble. And ESV, trouble and tragedy. CSB and HCSB, struggle and sorrow. Toil and pains. In other words, tribulation. In other words, tribulation. So it says, if this is... If this in Psalm 90, which I believe it is, I believe this is, Psalm 90 gave us a date of the Lord is a thousand years and helped us understand his uh, timeline as far as that. If a date of the Lord is a thousand years, we are right at the end of the 6,000 years right now, give or take a year or two. Um... I believe this is what the generation I believe this is what's defined as a generation what Jesus when Jesus said that final, this generation will not pass until all these things take place I believe this generation is spoken of here as for the days of our life they contain 70 years or due to strength 80 years yet their pride is but labor and sorrow in other words and what we just read previously in the chapter and the end of the years the end of those years is uh full of tribulation, full of the wrath of God, which happens during the tribulation time. And so if we go from 1948, 70 years from Israel was cre recreated as a nation on May 14th, 1948. May 14th, 1948. 70 years. As for the days of a life that contained 70 years. 70 years was... May 14th, 2018. As for the days of our life, they contain 70 years, or if due to strength, 80 years. So the max this generation can be is 80 years. 80 years from May 14th, 2021. I mean, from May 14th, uh, 1948. is May 14th, 2028. And if there's a seven-year tribulation, that final seven years, the final seven years of the fig tree generation begins May 14th, 2021, less than two weeks from now. That would be the beginning of the final seven years, according to this. Now, like I said, uh... I don't know if it's going to be a full seven years of tribulation. Jesus said the time is going to be cut short. The Bible also speaks in the book of Revelation about a delay. Uh, we also read in one of the scriptures last night. Uh, it was either Jeremiah or Isaiah. I believe uh, God said, for, for, for my name's sake, I delay my wrath. And speaking about the end time wrath. For, for my name's sake, I delay my wrath. There's a delay. There's a delay here in these last days. For the sake of the salvation of souls, so that we will be right with God, so that we, we will all, so that all will repent and turn to God. He wants everyone to be saved. People just got to be willing to stop rejecting him and, and follow him fully. Now, today is May 1st, 2021. We're 13 days away from May 14th, which would be the beginning of the final seven years. And I do believe this is the generation that Jesus was speaking about. I believe we're right there. We're right at the end of the 6,000 years. We're right at the end of the 73 years. And everything else going on in the world is lining up with what the Bible says is going to happen here in these last days.
as for the days of our life they contain seventy years, or if due to strength eighty years, yet their pride is but labor and sorrow, or tribulation. For soon it is gone, and we fly away. Who understands the power of your anger? And your fury according to the fear that is due you. We need to fear God. We need to fear his anger. He, he's about to, he, he could, but the Bible says, God said, uh, if I withdrew my spirit, all flesh would perish at once. He could destroy the whole world in a moment. Who understands the power of your anger and your fury according to the fear that is due you? So teach us to number our days that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number the days, the days of this final generation, so that we may present to him a heart of wisdom. And this... uh. Wow, and in this next verse gives it away as well. This next verse. Do return, O Lord. How long will it be? Right after. So teach us to number our days that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. The days of the final generation, the days of the 70 to 80 years. And then it says, do return, O Lord. How long will it be? It's about the Lord returning. This is it. I truly believe this is it. I truly believe we're entering this final seven years in 13 days. And whether that means the tribulation will begin then? I don't know. The Bible says there's a delay. And we're going to go through another scripture concerning the fig tree here in a second. So teach us to number our days that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. Do return, O Yahuwah, O Lord. How long will it be? And let's, let's go over to this other passage real quick about the fig tree before we finish up the chapter. So if we go over here to Luke chapter 13. Starting in verse 6. And he began telling this parable. This is Jesus speaking. A man had a fig tree. Well, we know what the fig tree is. It's Israel. A man had a fig tree which had been, pl been planted in his vineyard. And he came looking for fruit on it and did not find any. And he said to the vineyard keeper, so the the man is God, the Father. The vineyard keeper is Jesus, the Son. And he said to the vineyard keeper, Behold, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree. Without finding any, cut it down. Why does it even use up the ground? And he answered and said to him, Let it alone, sir, for this year too, until I dig, it, until I dig around it and put in fertilizer. And if it bears fruit next year, fine. But if not, cut it down. So we have a... God came looking for fruit on the fig tree. Said, for three years I've been looking for fruit on the fig tree. And then there's the final one year. There's one final year. One extra year. Now, when this, I lean toward this, I, I'm not saying this for sure, God hadn't, hasn't revealed this to me specifically, but I lean toward, we know, you know, I lean toward the, the three years beginning when Israel turned uh, 70 in 2018. I believe the, and I'm not saying this for sure.
but this is what I lean toward. I'm not saying it's 100% sure, but this is what I lean toward. Although it could all go down this year. But I lean toward it. Um, I lean toward the final th- that three years beginning when Israel turns 70. May 14th, 20, uh, 2018. Meaning the three years is 2019, 2020, and May 14th, 2021. May 14th, 2021 would be, in 13 days, would be the end of the three years. When when the Father says, Behold, for three years I've come, come looking for food on this fig tree without finding any. Cut it down. Why does it even use up the ground? And he answered and said to him, Let it alone, sir, for this year too, until I dig around it and put in fertilizer. And if it bears fruit next year, fine. But if not, cut it down. I believe God may give us one more year. And that there be a one-year delay of the tribulation time beginning. I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe the... Maybe the uh, maybe the final maybe that three years begin at the time of the Revelation twelve sign in twenty twenty eight uh, twenty seventeen fall of twenty seventeen. But I lean toward that not being the case because it's three and then four years, not not any half years, and um, from my understanding of scripture. Uh, I spoke about in my uh, Isaiah 18 Bible study and there's many scriptures that show that this it seems, seems that this is going to happen around the time of Pentecost this is going to happen right at the beginning of summertime, right before summer is when the tribulation is going to start so I lean toward it not being from the Revelation 12 sign and because it's the fig tree I lean toward it being on the year that Israel turned 70. Was that when the when God came looking for fruit on that fig tree? Meaning the final year would begin in 13 days. But I may be wrong. Maybe it's gonna happen this year. Maybe uh maybe it's uh Maybe that three years didn't start yet. Maybe it starts on May 14th this year. And we have three more years. I don't know. I don't know for sure. But that's what I'm leaning toward it being. That's what I'm leaning toward it being. Um... Uh, beginning on the 70 years. Which was... Uh, which would be... Three years would be 20... May 14, 2021. And then there's one final year. Uh, like I said, I'm not saying that 100% for sure, but... Uh, but we are living in this these days. We are living at this time. We are at the end of the 6,000 years about to have the tribulation time and then the millennial reign of Christ. And, it, you know, it's uh, 2028. It's believed that Jesus was... Uh, well, that's around the time he would have... Uh, I mean, it's, it's. I would have to. I, I don't want to say for sure. Uh, I would have to look at it again. I believe he was crucified, likely in uh, 30 A.D. Um, but a lot of people say 27, 28 A.D. And I just say that in regards to uh, the direct 2,000 years until. Um, until he returns to reign. So, um, we will see. We are living in these days, regardless of uh, 
whether we have a, whether we have a couple days, a couple weeks, or a couple years. That's all that we have left here on this earth, and we have to do God's will in everything. We have to preach the gospel, brothers and sisters. We need to be ready for the return of the Lord, and we still have to finish up Psalm 90, so let's go over here and finish up Psalm 90. It ended up being a, a little bit longer video than I expected, but but we, we need to talk about this. So teach us to number our days that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. Do return, O Yahuwah, O Lord. How long will it be? How long will it be till he returns? The Bible says 70 to 80 years. Do return, O Yahuwah, how long will it be? And be sorry for your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your loving kindness. That we may sing for joy and be glad all, of, all our days. Make us glad according to the days you have afflicted us. And the years that we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants and your majesty to their children. Hallelujah. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and confirm and confirm for us the work of our hands. Yes, confirm the work of our hands. Hallelujah. Confirm the work of our hands. We need to strive for and pray that, that Jesus says to us on that day, well done, good and faithful servant. Some he's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. Don't let that be you. Don't let that be you. And this is speaking about believers. He's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. Because they never truly, they might have believed, they might have done work for the Lord, but they never truly had a relationship with him, never truly followed him and, and had a relationship with him. Don't let that be you. Many, he said, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord. But he said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father will enter. Let's be ready, brothers and sisters. Let's walk in all his ways. Let's serve him with all our heart. Let's be prepared for the return of the Lord. This is all going to go down soon. It's, it's, it's going to be so bad. It's going to be so ugly when it does. Billions of people are going to die. But at the same time, salvation is going to take place. And those who chose to follow Jesus are going to be saved. Hallelujah. All he wants us to do is humble ourselves and seek him. Follow him. And seek his forgiveness. And if you haven't been and if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, call out to him. Ask him to forgive you for your sins. Make that choice to repent and follow him. Give your life to Jesus Christ today. Repent and believe the gospel. We're living in the last days. There's not much time left. That's the end of Psalm 90. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom and Shabbat Shalom to everybody out here keeping a Sabbath day. Hallelujah.